Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Arch with Imran. I'm Imran. I hope you guys are having a great day and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made these big inspired diagrams. But before we get into the video, I've got a quick disclaimer. Firstly, I really want to say thank you for all of the support, the amazing comments you guys are giving. <laughs> it feels lovely and I hope you guys continue to find these videos helpful. And as always, if you have any video requests, leave them in the comments and I'll see what I can do. And also, don't forget to join our new Discord and Instagram so you don't miss a new video. Okay, let's get into it. So first thing, we start off in Rhino. Now, I've already got my concept massings done, so what I'm doing is I'm going to work backwards. I start with my finished concept model, and I then deduct each of the elements that I want to be separate steps. Now I've planned out beforehand what these steps are going to be and I've showed this quick sketch I did to show my plans. Now the way I'm duplicating these is I first make sure my gumball is on by clicking gumball at the bottom of the screen and then I hold alt as I use the move tool. Now, keep in mind you could use SketchUp for this, but I'm using Rhino, but there are loads of other programs as long as you ensure they're all isometric and you just export the line work. The beautiful thing about big diagrams is they really clearly show the design development, so it's really important that you plan how you want your diagrams to look beforehand. So here I am just playing about to find the easiest way to make the model I want. Now again all of this is super simple, it's just simple boxes and lines. So what I do is I draw a rectangle around the individual buildings and then I extrude a box to match this. I also do lines to show where it is. I can make it look like these are cut out of the block afterwards. Okay, now this is the crucial bit. What we do is we click the drop down, we hit set view and we choose isometric. Now I'm going to do southeast because that shows the correct sides I want to show, but it'll be different for your design. And as you've seen in loads of videos, we're going to be using the make 2D command to turn that view into simple line work. Now I change to the top down view to make sure these are all correct and what I do is I select them all and then I just export them to a new document so we can then clear up our page. Now I'm just lining these up, making sure the order's correct and I still know what each step changes are. Again, as you've seen in loads of videos, we're going to be using the print command. However, the beneficial thing about these diagrams is they don't need to be to scale. So what I do is I just manipulate the scale and the size just till I find something that fits them nicely. And then once I have an idea of the scale I want to fill the page properly, I rearrange them all so they look nice. Again, you can change all of these in the future, there's no, it's not set in stone. So here we are in Illustrator now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up that file, the PDF, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to clean up the line work and thicken all of the strokes. I also change these areas that I want to look like a cut out to a dotted line, and all I do is I click on stroke and tick dashed line. So 
so you can see me just going through cleaning up all the line work to make sure it looks how I want it to. And also as you can see here what I intended was for my canopy to be slightly see-through so I rendered out the canopy alone and the canopy with the buildings below just so I could get the measurements right and then I'll delete the one with the buildings below. So here I am now in Photoshop, I'm cleaning up all my lines and I add paths. What I've done is I've put each diagram in its own group and that'll make it easier to colour and organise later on. And as you can see here, what I mentioned before, where I'm just putting the canopy and I'm combining it with the previous diagram and then I can delete the one we had originally. Now, the way I've decided to colour this, if you look at big inspired diagrams, they tend to have one darker side, an even lighter side, and then the top is the lightest. So what I do is I use quite dark colours and so I can get a range of values. And then when I turn the opacity down, this difference will be minimised. Now to fill in these colours all I'm using is the magic wand tool and I'm holding shift and I'm just clicking within the line work. Now as you can see I start to add colours. So for this one I simply use the magnetic lasso tool and I just click each corner I fill it with colour. Now as you can see I'm reducing the opacity of the fill so it's less harsh. I'm also now highlighting the details for specific diagrams. For example, this diagram shows where I've added wing walls to stop high pressure wind coming down the building. And now here I am making the arrows. What I do is I do a square box, I cut it in half, and then what I do is I change the height to 60 and the angle to 60. Again, you can play with these to get different angles you like. I also recommend Upstairs' video where he shows some great examples of arrows you can use for big inspired diagrams. To do the arrows, I simply use the pen tool and then I stroke it with my brush. You can also right click, flip horizontally and vertically to change the angle, as well as using the rotation. Just so you guys know, like in Rhino, to duplicate an arrow, I just hold the Alt whilst holding the Move tool, and then it will duplicate it onto a new layer. And there you go guys, that's unfortunately all we have time for in this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. As always, make sure to like, comment and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. And I'll catch you guys in another one.